Um, this week with the year two um, med students, we've been talking about the anatomy of the breast and uh, breast cancer. So obviously that reminded me that I wanted to talk about how venous blood gets out of the vertebral column. The two are linked, we'll get there towards the end. But what we're going to talk about then is the, uh, the vertebral venous plexuses. So we should introduce or review very, very briefly the vertebral column, spinal cord and stuff. Um, and then we'll look at how blood gets from the spinal cord, from the bones of the vertebral column, into the rest of the body and back to the systemic circulation. And that's all these guys in here, all right? That's the plan. Then we'll do clinical stuff, like at the end, we'll... <laughs> this is the vertebral column. Lots of, uh, lots of individual bones. Very, very special, very, very interesting, us chordates. Um, the vertebral column is made up of a number of bones. Bones have a rich blood supply. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they heal quite well, right? And also in a lot of, well, in, inside most bones, we find bone marrow. We have, we have cells in many bones that are producing the cells of the blood. So bones have a rich blood supply. And um, the vertebral column has a number of regions, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal, and the bones often look quite different in different regions, but they have that same basic premise. Now, what we can see here is we can see a silver, silver rod running within the vertebral column of this skeleton. Um, so here's a lumbar vertebra. This is the body of the vertebra. And then we have various processes and we form an arch. And in here is a hole, a canal. This is the vertebral canal or the spinal canal. And this is often an area of particular interest because in here we find the spinal cord. So if the brain is up here, it's sending nerves down the spinal cord or nerves are running up the spinal cord to the brain and controlling the rest of the body. So this is really, really important. So spinal cord, vertebral canal, and then we have in between the vertebrae, we have these holes. So two vertebrae each have like half a hole. You put those two vertebrae together and you have a hole, you have a hole hole. And that is the intervertebral foramen, intervertebral foramen. Foramen meaning hole, intervertebral means it's between two vertebrae. And out of there we see a spinal nerve coming out. And also that's a way for blood vessels to get in and out. How's that? That's, that's like our recap, isn't it? And all this is held together with ligaments and what have you. We've done, <laughs> funny enough, we've done, lots of, we've done lots of vertebral column. I haven't done the arterial supply of the vertebral column yet. I'm doing the venous drainage first, which is unusual, right? We normally talk about arteries and not veins, but here we're talking about veins, which must mean they're important. Right here, we have a beautiful model. This is one of the most amazing things about these models is that the more you look at them, the more you find, which just shows you how much the designers and the artists put into this. It, they truly are incredible. So here we can see the spinal cord running down the back and the bones have been cut away. And here we see the naked spinal cord and we see nerve rootlets forming spinal nerves coming out. We can see the gaps between the bones there. Those were the intervertebral foramina. That's an intervertebral foramen that I was just talking about. But you see here, it's covered up here. So the brain is covered by layers of connective tissue, pia mater, arachnoid mater, and dura mater. And dura mater is the tough covering. And those coverings continue down the spinal cord. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing the, the dura mater. The dura mater covering over the spinal cord. And it's just been cut away here so that we can see the spinal cord and cut away up here. Um, and look, we can see a lot of veins. These veins then are the internal vertebral venous plexus, um, also known as the epidural venous plexus because they are upon the dura. They're outside the dura mater. They're superficial to the dura mater, but they are within the vertebral canal. So the internal vertebral venous plexus is inside the vertebral canal, but outside the dura mater. So it is receiving veins from the spinal cord. 
um, it links up to dural venous sinuses up here and it is also receiving some veins from um, the vertebral bones as well. Now what we see is we see we kind of so, so the vertebral venous plexus we have like longitudinal veins running the whole length uh, of the of the vertebral column and we have roughly speaking two anteriorly and two posteriorly that is if we have our vertebral canal we have two like on the posterior part and two on the anterior part the anterior part is posterior to the vertebral body <laughs> it makes it's logical, but it doesn't sound like it makes sense. Right, so the vertebral body, this is anterior. There's the vertebral body. So we have a pair of um, veins running the length of the vertebral canal posterior to the vertebral body. And those would be the anterior parts of the internal vertebral venous plexus. And then we have posterior pair. So basically we've kind of got four veins running the length of the vertebral canal and what we can kind of see here is how they're all linked up this is the plexus we're talking about it's like a meshwork a net a whole bunch of connections we see veins doing this more than we see arteries doing it so this is the internal vertebral venous plexus so remember that this is a cutaway of of this right so the vertebral body has a uh, basi vertebral basi vertebral basi vertebral veins draining the body of the vertebra through well we, we can we can see this is a plastic bone but we can see some in here there are little there are little foramina coming out of the bone so these basi vertebral veins come out of the body of the vertebra and they will drain then to the anterior <laughs> internal vertebral venous plexus veins there and they'll also pass out the other side too so that means okay so the 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 veins of the internal vertebral venous plexus are receiving blood from as i said the spinal cord and the basi vertebral veins of the the body of the vertebrae and then they are leaving through the intervertebral foramen as intervertebral veins so they're going from internal to external one of the notes here's our vertebral column and you can see through these holes here we can see the spinal cord now these in life are covered that covered by ligaments there are ligaments all over this um, it's a beautiful arrangement so veins from the internal vertebral venous plexus can also pass through or i would imagine around the ligaments that are covering up these holes, so the ligaments supporting the vertebrae. So again, they can run from internal to external posteriorly in that way. There are lots of links, all right, L lots of links. So blood from the internal vertebral venous plexus drains out of the vertebral canal to the outside of the vertebra where we find the external vertebral venous plexus. So the external vertebral venous plexus has venous vessels running anterior to the vertebral bodies, outside the vertebral bodies, and posterior to the arches of the vertebrae and the processes and that sort of thing. So we have an external vertebral venous plexus out here. So this external vertebral venous plexus then is, as I said, receiving blood from the basi vertebral veins that are also draining from the vertebral bodies anteriorly to these and from the intervertebral veins. And they run the entire length of the, of the vertebral column. Where does that blood go? Let's see if I can show you. We are segmented animals. We see this in the organization of the vertebral column. No, this is the wrong model. <laughs> um, this is what I want. Look, 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 look. Segmented animal. So you see the ribs, and you've seen the vertebral column. 
So we've got lots of segments and that's reflected in the blood supply. Here we can see arteries and veins running out at those segmental levels. So we have the intercostal arteries and veins, these are the posterior intercostal arteries and veins, we have the lumbar arteries and veins, and then we have sacral arteries and veins down here. These are the veins, these, these get, so if you were to lump all these together you'd call them the segmental veins of the, the trunk. These are the veins that the external vertebral venous plexus drains to. So be a little bit careful here. There are vertebral arteries and there are vertebral veins and they're particular structures up in the neck. The vertebral venous plexus is something else and then the parts of the vertebral venous plexus are the external vertebral venous plexus and internal vertebral venous plexus and you can talk about anterior parts and posterior parts of each of those. But that's the anatomy and look how that links with the vasculature up here, the veins up here, the dual venous sinuses of the head. So this is all linked together. Which leads me to my next point. Um, so this vertebral venous plexus also gets called Batson's vertebral venous plexus. Batson wasn't the first person to recognise the anatomy here, but he was the first person to do significant work that showed their functions or indicated towards their functions, their roles and maybe how they might take part in disease. These are valveless veins. Veins without valves. This is a low pressure system. Arteries, high pressure. Veins, low pressure, being drawn back to the heart. Meaning that, yes, you should think of the blood flow as being from the spinal cord to the internal vertebral venous plexus, out through the intervertebral veins to the external vertebral venous plexus and into the intercostal veins and back to the superior vena cava and what have you. But because there are no valves, there is the potential for bidirectional flow. The blood could flow in either direction and you wouldn't need much of a pressure change to <laughs> cause that to occur, right? Batson injected dye into the breasts of cadavers, into the veins of the breasts of cadavers. This was dye that he could track. And he saw that this dye flowed back to the vertebral venous plexus. And we saw how the vertebral bodies are draining blood into the vertebral venous plexus. And in late stage breast cancer, uh, we see metastatic disease. That is, we see the cancer spreading to the vertebral column. And if you're looking um, at the vertebral column, if you're studying radiographically um, a cancer patient, these are the things that you look for. So the, the route of flow then is metastatic disease from the breast. If it's unfortunate enough to pass into a blood vessel, into a vein, then that'll pass into the, the veins of the chest, around the intercostal veins, which we've seen are linked to the external vertebral venous plexus, which can then pass to the internal vertebral venous plexus or somehow into those bazy vertebral veins and pass into the, the vertebral bones, the, the vertebral bodies. And then we've seen how this venous synth system links up to the dural venous sinuses in the head. So this is also a route then for metastatic disease, infection, uh, emboli, so an embolus is anything that can block a blood vessel, to pass into the cranial cavity. And that's why the vertebral venous plexus is so important. Batson and other did follow up his work um, with um, living animals and people and valsalva maneuvers, that is when you strain, you know, when you increase your intrathoracic pressure, um, you're lifting something heavy or you cough, you sneeze. In those cases, he was able to see in the living dye passing from the veins of the chest into the vertebral venous plexus, the opposite of the direction of flow that we've been describing as we followed it out from the spinal cord back to the veins of the chest, right? Um, and there are other notes as well, like, um, so in, in pregnancy, the, um, these veins, I think, become much more engorged because uh, maybe, well, 
So in pregnancy, there is an increase in systemic blood volume, but also the, the fetus becomes so large that it can compress the inferior vena cava. I haven't taken this one apart, but the, the major vein in the abdomen, and it's postulated that the vertebral venous plexus is an alternate route of flow to get blood from the pelvis and the lower limbs back to the heart. When we are let down, most of the blood from inside the cranial cavity leaves through the internal jugular veins. But it seems that when we stand up, more of that blood from the cranial cavity leaves through the vertebral venous plexus. So there are roles in physiology here. And if there are effects on blood flow entering and leaving the cranial cavity, then there are effects on intracranial pressure, which is really important inside this closed box that houses our brain, our us. Um, and because we have these veins and we have the back and the surface area and it's close to the surface here, there have been ideas postulated that maybe the vertebral venous plexus has a role to play in cooling the brain and the spinal cord, maybe directly or indirectly. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, this is why we did the veins first, because in this case, the vertebral venous plexus of veins is more interesting um, than the arterial supply. But we will do the arterial supply one day in the future when the fancy takes me, don't worry. Okay, the vertebral venous plexus. Uh, see you next week. Mm -hmm.